Welcome to part three of uh, the hamster cage for April 14th, 2015. Uh, we started with Double Dragon, then we did Nova 2001 uh, as our second game. Our third game is this. This is Rygar. Not to be confused with Rygar on the NES. It's a, uh, the NES game w was, of course, inspired by this one, but took it in a, a completely different direction. This one is a straight up side scroller there's no adventure element to it. it it's really just a quarter munching side scroller uh you know but you know it, it is what it is it's a good game uh i do prefer the nes version but this one's fun as well and honestly um this is I, I feel i feel at home with this game i've streamed this game so much uh, on normal game couch. Uh, I feel very at home with it. Uh, last time we did this game, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to include it in this uh, particular hamster cage series. Last time we did this ga game in the hamster cage, uh, I kind of screwed something up in options, and uh, it was the... Um, the, the credit feed option where you continue where you left off when you die. And for some reason I had that toggled off because I reset the game and I forgot to set it back. And it's very confusing because it's all in Japanese and I can't read Japanese. Uh, but we got that fixed. So, uh... And that, that option works up until, like, level 22. But after that you have, like, three levels that you absolutely have to beat legitimately. Uh, but up until that, yeah, you can credit feed up until that point. This is one of the games that we did upside down for Australia Day. And uh, oddly enough, like, I kind of started to get the hang of it. You know, playing it upside down. That was a fun little uh, experiment. <laughs> we did that and uh, City Connection and Double Dragon and I can't remember what the other one was. But yeah, that was fun, dude. I, I like doing stuff like that literally turning games on on their heads <laughs> oh that guy I want to get powered up get you become kind of like unstoppable when you get powered up it's like gradius in that way where it's like you you get so powered up you can basically just kill everything on screen, but then you die and you're back at zero, and you can never regain that footing again. Like, once once you start dying, that's all she wrote. Gradius, by the way, is another game on the Arcade Archives uh, collection. Ah! I've streamed that a couple times as well. And we will stream it again. Not tonight. But, you know, eventually. <laughs> We're going to be streaming all of these games for a while. Like, these aren't going anywhere. Retro games are kind of my bread and butter, so... Yeah, we'll be doing these for a while. Get used to it. I like Rygar, too. It's a good game. I've mentioned it before, but I never really understood the, the, the significance of these transitional sections. They seem odd to me. Out of place. And you know what? I keep forgetting to hit my timer. Ah! <laughs> that could have went a lot worse. trying to time these so that they're uniform across the hamster cage, but I keep forgetting to, uh, crap! I keep forgetting to set my timer, so I just have to deal with it, I guess. Are you kidding me right now with all these guys? Somehow I survived that onslaught.
I was thinking about doing a uh, like an NES day, playing all the arcade archive games that uh, you know were arcade games that got ported to the NES, like this and, and Gradius, like I mentioned, and City Connection. City Connection was awesome, uh, you know, back in the day on the old NES there. Even though, like, it was really choppy, like the animation was really choppy, there was something endearing about it, you know? That was a close, close call there. This is a tough level, man. You got all these guys coming up out of the ground. Oh my god! No! So close to the end, too. Blue monkeys. Oh man. Oh my god. These monkeys are relentless. This part can get kind of tricky if you're not careful. You F off already. And this is where the game starts actually getting kind of hard. It's people dropping in on your heads on your head like that. background seems to indicate that we're moving into snow territory, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think there is such a thing in this game. The background is throwing me off. You see the snow back there? Oh, God. I thought that was platform I could walk on. All right, let's see. Yeah, we continue where we left off. See, that's the option I had toggled off before. So we had to start over every time, which is fine. And, you know, that works in the arcade. But, uh, you know, playing at home, maybe we'd like to continue where we left off, you know? So I'm glad you have access to the dip switch settings and options. A lot of home arcade re-releases give you uh, access to the dip switch settings. It's a good thing. Man, I don't even really know what hit me. I think I know what hit me, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, God. 
<laughs> Sneaking up behind me. I think I'm invincible now, right? Is that what this is? Yeah! I'm pretty sure this persists between rounds as well. So I should be able to sneak through most of round 8 with this thing on. That would be alright. I love that background, it's so iconic. This is a pretty good good amount of time, that invincibility. Oh, one of these guys. Time to die. <laughs> Those giant blue guys are rough. that guy so much. This background reminds me of something from Axiom Verge. It's the second time I mentioned uh, Axiom Verge on the... Uh, oh my god! <laughs> second time I, I mentioned Axiom Verge on the, uh, the hamster cage tonight. That's a great game, man. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I got a friend that I think would really be into it. I don't know if he's played it yet or not. He's on the Xbox One. Is Axiom Verge on the Xbox One? I don't think that it is, is it? So he might not be able to play it, which is too bad for him, because I do think he'd like it. Oh my god! What was that and how did I survive it? And then that guy kills me. After all that, that guy kills me. It's like Bloodborne, man. You know, like... You can survive the craziest stuff in Bloodborne, and then just some rando with a pickaxe kills you. Uh, how many people compare Rygar to Bloodborne? keep coming back. It'd be nice if I could climb this rope without worrying about these bats. Oh, 
Am I taking too long? Yep, I was taking too long. That big, big red face is chasing me. Was. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remembered something with these holes. I thought snakes came out of them or something. Way too many guys. I like the music that plays between between rounds. Man, there was like nothing I could do there. That was a tough spot. figure this part out. I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's a cool background there. I like that. Hang that up on my wall. <laughs> they should do a modern golden axe. I can get behind that. They were going to reboot um, Road Rash. Whatever happened to that? Never saw the light of day, I guess. I saw a video of like a, like a new Road Rash. Oh, God. I saw a video of like a new road rash like in an alpha build or something. It seems like nothing ever became of it. Which is too bad because road rash is a winning formula, you know? And then you got Skitchen. Man, me and my friends used to play Skitchen all the time. I still play Road Rash. I was playing Road Rash like a week ago. Love Road Rash. It got weird with 3. 3 was weird. 3 was almost kind of racist because it played like it played this like really cliche like stereotypical uh um ethnic music for like like Africa and and Italy and stuff. It like it wasn't racist, but it almost felt like it was. Yeah, Road Rash Three was weird. And then they did the the uh, uh, New Vegas level. I think it was New Vegas or Las Vegas. I'm thinking of Fallout. It was Las Vegas level. 
and uh, uh, it was all like neon. I think they were trying to capture like the visual aesthetic of like Rad Racer or something. Yeah, I think I think that Road Rash Three is where they lost it. Road Rash One and Two are classics, but Road Rash Three is just I don't know. It's kind of weird. Doesn't really do it for me. Then they had that reboot uh, on 3DO and PlayStation, and then Road Rash 3D, which was awesome as well. I, I always, for years, I had like the the reboot and Road Rash 3D in my head as like the same game. Like I like for some reason, like I, I kept thinking that they were the same game. I was like, man, that's the perfect Road Rash game. <laughs> and it would be if they were the same game. Like, if, if all that was, like, condensed into one single game, that would be, like, the perfect Road Rash game. But I was remembering it wrong. They're, in fact, two separate games. Both great games. Of course, man. Got fond memories of both of them. Ah, oh, God, I should... What was that about? You're allowed to jump on fireballs. Oh, God, walked right off. I used to play um, the reboot at my friend's house back in the day on my 3DO. Yeah, that's right. I had a 3DO. There were dozens of us. I thought I was, like... I thought I was locked down in a safe spot for a second. I like the 3DO. 3DO is a good console. And now I'm invincible again, so yeah, let's take advantage of this and just run through. Got time for a couple more rounds in this, I think. And then we move on to Crazy Climber. Aptly named. <laughs> Um, Rygar, Crazy Climber, and Ninja Kun were the first three games released on PS4 for, ah, for Arca Arcade Archives. And, uh, man, I just bought all three of them. I was so stoked about, about the idea of playing authentic arcade games on the PS4. I was kind of hoping it would turn into, like, a, like, some kind of MAME box or something. Like like game room all over again or something like that and it kind of is I mean for for uh, you know for the most part I mean that's what we're getting I just hope they keep on top of it like keep releasing these games I will keep buying them if hamster keeps putting them out on that note we're gonna go ahead and stop Rygar and uh, stay tuned we will be right back with crazy climber <laughs> 